Welcome to the Transforming Assessment webinar series. This session is about e-marking tools and processes. The presenter is Dr. Peter Evans from the University of Southern Queensland in Australia. Uh, the session occurred on the 18th of August 2010. The duration of the session is approximately one hour. I'll now hand you over to our presenter, Dr. Peter Evans. So. Okay, my name is Peter Evans. Um, I guess I'm here in two roles. One, as uh, a staff member at the University of Southern Queensland in Australia, but also as developer of the eMarking Assessment Package. In this, in this session, um, in Transforming Assessment, we're going to be talking about eMarking tools and processes. This is what I plan to talk about, the importance of formative assessment and feedback in higher education, so formative assessment and feedback in higher education. And unfortunately, the fact that for many of us, it's a process that's fundamentally broken. Talk about how, uh, maybe not popular is the right word, but how commonly used uh, uh, traditional teacher marked assessment uh, actually is. Talk a little bit about the tools used for supporting e-assessment and e-feedback, and then talk about one particular tool. But I think it would be much more useful if we use this not just as a monologue, or not as a monologue, but rather as a way of starting uh, some discussions from, from various people. The reason for that is the there's more than enough written about these issues. We, we understand we understand many of the issues that are going along, that are occurring. We need to actually think about ways of implementing these things. The devil is in the detail, or the devil is in the doing of it. Okay, Jeff's already talked about uh, tools in WIMPA. Uh, we're all familiar with that. What I would like is for you just to put across uh, where you're located. Part of the reason is that uh, people that are looking at the archive will only, won't, won't see everyone's name. So it would be good if you could just indicate that. I will also just turn on my camera for a little while. Okay, so we've got a couple of people in Australia, someone up in uh, England, in the UK. Someone in New Zealand, fantastic. Thank you very much. And please do what Jeff has suggested. Put lots of text in the text box because that's a really useful archive uh, that we can all use. This should be an interactive session. Okay, while people are putting their, their names and uh, crosses on the screen, we know how incredibly important feedback is to students. You know, it's one of the most effective ways that we can have an impact on student learning. And it's becoming increasingly important as we move to more online education uh, where the uh, the student and the teacher are uh, separated in some way. Unfortunately, we also know that the assessment process and the feedback process is, well, very problematic. I'll go on to another, uh, another slide here. Where courses are delivered by distance education, the role of the marker becomes pivotal. The marker is effectively the gatekeeper for university quality. But there's relatively little attention is paid to the, the marker. Perhaps, and somewhat Smith and Coombe have suggested this, perhaps universities are unwilling to open a Pandora's box. And that's especially important or increasingly important nowadays, as we've got more and more casualised workers uh, working in higher education. I'll just turn off my video. I don't think uh, there's that much value to be added by that. 
We also know that academics are not all on assessing or, or on marking assignments. It's not it's not something that's uh, uh, an overly uh, uh, inherently rewarding uh, process. We also know that students perceive the feedback or the assessment process and the feedback that they get as one of the least satisfying aspects of university study. Certainly that's the case in uh, 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 most student experience surveys in Australia and also UK. Administrators obviously are, are seeing the, the process of marking in a fairly negative way as well, you know, as uh, evidenced by the fact that there's an increasing use of casual and sessional markers, and increasing uh, use of outsourced marking services. If any of you uh, looked in the higher education supplement a couple of months ago, you would have seen an article about uh, outsourced assessment services coming out of uh, uh, India and uh, Indonesia. Quality agencies are also becoming increasingly focused on the feedback and the assessment, the feedback that students are receiving. We all know the, the, the difference between formative and summative assessment. And most institutions have policies that emphasise the importance of both summative and timely formative assessment. But you know, the, the reality is that, that many institutional policies have reduced, resulted in a steady reduction in the amount of effective formative assessment that can be given uh, to students. Yeah, things like the modularisation of the curricula, you know, breaking courses into ever smaller sections that can be taken in very flexible uh, uh, ways. You know, class sizes and marking loads have increased. We've got more diverse student population. There are less opportunities for interaction between the markers and and their uh, and their students. All of this adds up to a, a fairly vicious sort of circle. As Jeff says, you know, staff are often very sceptical about how seriously our students engage with purely formative assessment or even, even feedback that goes on a summative assessment piece. If, I can't, if the student can't immediately apply that to improve their learning, what is the point of them? looking at that formative assessment or that feedback. Obviously what we want to achieve is you know, a virtuous cycle where stronger feedback, more effective feedback can result in stronger feed forward into future learning. But unfortunately that's not always the way that it plays out. We know a lot about giving feedback, giving formative feedback practice. Yeah, this is perhaps one of the most quoted uh, uh, early work. The seven principles for good, good feedback practice. But how do we apply those? How do we apply those in a way that we can do it in a sustained or a sustainable way? Yeah, without for six months and then smouldering into resignation in more ways than one, I guess. <laughs>